entering my Niagara Falls. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. I mean, Shalom. Aleichem. Uh, yeah, just um, riding around tonight in Niagara Falls. Uh, figured I'd get out a bit just to concentrate a bit more on the uh, Torah and Kabbalah and how it aligns to the uh, to the physical world. There's a lot going on right now, but what's very important is that Kabbalah teaches us is that most of the material matter that we see uh, illuminating in the ether, um, for the most part, is based in uh, illusions. And the only reality is based in that which represents love, light, wisdom, happiness, and Torah. When I say Torah, I'm also pertaining to that which um, came to us via Sinai, which is Halakha, um, correlated into um, what we have today in Jewish law. Um, so this is very important to understand. So a lot of the things we see in the world, the atrocities and all the politics and everything else is very important to measure uh, what is the purpose of these situations and how they uh, manifest in the ether and how they affect our thought process um, on a daily basis. The infinite light spoke all into existence and it's important to remember this reality as we uh, proceed forth in the, uh, the material world. Uh, this is Niagara Falls, a uh, very beautiful city. I, I like to come here some night because it reminds me somewhat of uh, a little bit of the, uh, the madness that happens on Bourbon Street. So I like to see that sometime, you know, being a you know, an American Israeli in Canada. And even with Toronto being a very beautiful city, but sometimes it becomes boring. It's good to step out because I am a Vegas, a Vegas fanatic to the heart. Parents used to take us to Vegas every summer. Most of the family lived out in Southern California. But uh, back to Kabbalah, very important too in the revelation and revealing of the divine law, which was transmitted um, to Moshe and 42 receivers who were qualified by divine ordinance. Divine ordinance. This is a very important concept because most people are unaware that when Moshe received Torah, um, he wasn't alone. We are told that the ministering angels that um, accompanied the light, or Hashem, uh, numbered um, in the area of 10,000. And there was a dispute about Moshe being granted this powerful, powerful mechanism uh, known as uh, the commandments, the law. So the angels uh, disputed and they argued with Hashem that what, what a man born of a woman, why would he bestow such wisdom on such an individual? And God, the Torah says he didn't scold them, but he said to the angels that no, not one of them has endured what Moshe endured, endured, um, so they really um, wouldn't understand human human trials and tribulations, if you will, and how Moses and Moshe uh, Moshe, excuse me, had been uh, adopted and abandoned as a youngster. And Hashem, he said that none of them, the angels, had experienced this, and he felt that Moses and I mean Moshe was the uh, perfect benefactor of such a divine law. The angels agreed and thus what we have is, is history. And this is where we are now. 
an interchanging world with a Torah that must also become interchangeable, but at the same time remain powerful enough to uh, transmute and at the same time remain powerful and understanding in its essence.